It's a rainy day to travel. It means two things. One, the guards might not be out checking as much. But two, more landslides probable. We had no permit, but boarded a sleeper bus bound for Tibet. Undercover on the bus. The falling rocks were cute at first, but after lunch we hit our first landslide and had to turn back. After sleeping in a parking lot, we returned to the scene of the landslide. We determined that it wasn't safe and walked across. I guide my people through the ocean of rock to safety. Then the bus attempted to drive it. While stranded at the next town from blocked roads, Heath opened a massage hut, we found hay drying in a basketball court, and villagers that ziplined back and forth over the river. That night, we played drinking games, danced to a Chinese mandolin, and met the local big boys. On day three, we had to clear a new landslide and then continue through the valley, where Heath found the worst shitter in the world. There was great excitement when the snow wheels were added, for use in a particularly muddy situation. That night, the fan belt broke. <laughs> you gotta laugh at it. Soon afterwards, the bus's engine finally gave out, and we got stranded at a remote Buddhist monastery. So we got a long way to go. This sucks. My bed was wet, the roof was leaking, and it was early, cold, and snowy on day five. In the daylight, the monastery was amazingly colorful, and yes, it had a pool table. Heath got friendly with a buffalo, and we had lunch with the builders who were building a new wing to the monastery. We waited for the snow to melt and the engine to be fixed so we could leave. By that night, we realized we weren't leaving, so we sang instead. <laughs> the snow had melted near our breakdown area, and the Chinese folks from the bus set the pork thigh on fire, scraped it off with puddle water, and then the women cooked it. It was a bit salty. The engine was far from repaired. In fact, it was totally in pieces, and a rather crazy handicapped guy was poking it with a knife. Heath explored the warming valley, and Doug went to work painting sections for the new monastery building. By that night, the engine was under tarps, the bus was a mess, and we had to do something. On day 7, we didn't rest. Instead, we waved to a 200-truck military convoy, got our bags, and walked down the road where we waited for the only other bus that passed daily. Some hours later, it came, and we left our old bus, stranded at the top of the monastery's curvy road. The new bus hit a wonderfully snowy mountain pass and got a flat tire. Keith got addicted to oxygen. <sighs> this guy fixed the problem. We arrived in the main checkpoint town of Bamda, undercover and out of sight. Chances were high, like the drop from the toilet, that tomorrow we might be caught. Our driver constantly smoked and his fly was broken. The barrier went up and we drove through. We removed our disguises and drove into the mountains. We fixed a fan belt, replaced the tire, continued onwards, and befriended a funny Tibetan Lama called Kunga. We stopped to pee in a high mountain pass, struck poses, negotiated boulders, and hoped to get to Lhasa the next day. In the morning, we went on the edge of Death Road. We stopped in a pasture where Heath went for a horse ride, and we saw the most spiritual of litter, thousands of prayer flags. We were in high spirits. Kunga read stories, Ping got trash piled on him, and Doug found joy in oleos. But that afternoon, the bus driver got lazy, and after arguing, he declared that while only a few hours away, we would get there tomorrow. Motherfucker. So we went for Korean barbecue. It was of minor comfort. If we don't make it today, we're gonna break this bus into pieces. We played street pool while the wheel was fixed, and then jetted out of that last town before Lhasa. Keith beat up Pin, we went through the last checkpoint, and we decided we didn't like this guy, who ate everyone's snacks without asking. We interviewed Kunga over lunch, then passed the final outskirts and arrived in Lhasa, the spiritual capital of Tibet. Sweet, sweet Lhasa, land of dreams, city of mystery. We said goodbye to Ping and went on with our mission. In Lhasa, we visited the Patola Palace, guided by our favorite monk. Frustrating pilgrims crawled towards it from hundreds of miles away, day and night. Before leaving, we helped a certain clinic who wants to remain anonymous. According to the government, the disease they treat isn't active in China. According to what we saw, it is. We took the next few days to find two friends to join us in a jeep bound for Nepal. We'd take a break from buses.
Well, I guess that about wraps it up. Is there anything that you want to say to uh, to the world for the end of your interview? I would say everybody you know, try to have a peace of mind. Not only uh, try to get uh, happiness uh, on the material things. Thank you very much, Gunga. Okay.